everybody doing today? I hope everybody's having an awesome day. I know I am so far. Had my coffee, had plenty of water so far, feeling very, very, very good. Um, and I am starting my trek down my supplements today. I did not take Ember today. I chose for a second cup of coffee instead of Ember. Um, and then I'll be taking no morbidity probably here in probably about two or three hours. Um, no food as of yet. Wait, I did have a uh, I did have a handful of walnuts, and then besides that, I'll probably have some Asian beef today and call it a day. Uh, very controlled hunger right now. Um, and for those of you that don't know, uh, if you're just joining us, you can get our coaching right here. You can get a consultation right there at a nice discounted price off for those of you that are watching the live streams, and or you can get no morbidity Ambrosia Collective. TigerFitness.com, Vitamin Shop, grab it. Many other places coming very soon. We appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about how being fat makes you demented. I mean, I know this is um, what's weird is like, oh, it's a new study out. Oh, a new study out that says that being obese is bad for your cognitive uh, abilities and can lead to dementia and causes uh, you know lack of self control and all sorts of stuff. The sad thing is, is, we keep saying new study, like this is known shit. I, this is the problem. I will tell you why I think this is happening, okay? Um, and when, I'm going to do something a little different, by the way. Uh, I am, uh-oh, oh, are you kidding me? I accidentally closed my tab out. Shit, give me one second. Uh, here we go. I think this is it. This is it. Okay, good. Um, but NBC News, okay? Here's how you know something is up, right? Because NBC News saying that obesity can cause changes in the brain similar to Alzheimer's study suggests. This is a very woke corporation. For, and I'm, and if, if this is going to get a little real for everybody, we're going to have to have, like accept the fact that there's Different, two different ideologies when it comes to this stuff. But this is a very woke corporation talking about obesity as if it's a problem. I'm just going to say right off the bat, you can rest assured that they are trying to sell you something. <laughs> uh, we have something going on over here. It's all good. <laughs> so funny. Uh, she's making me laugh so hard. Her facial expressions are amazing. Um, but we have to accept, what was I saying? Shit. Uh, we have to accept the fact that this is a very woke corporation and they are going to stand behind the body positivity movement, the fat acceptance community, all these people are going to stand behind them to a great degree and have. They are, they are very into the body positivity, wokey, climate changey, all that stuff you know, thing. We all know this, right? For them to be saying that, uh, you know, hey, being fat can cause dementia means that they got something to sell you. I'm just going to, we're going to read through this. Obesity can cause changes in the brain. So uh, it's similar to Alzheimer's study suggests. And this has been, we've known this for a long time. Like they're pretending like this is brand new shit. Brain scans show patterns of shrinkage in regions involved in learn, learning, memory, and judgment. Experts hope, to, hope losing weight could reverse some of the damage. Like, so if you are an adult and you're obese as an adult, you're increasing, massively increasing your risks of dementia and of Alzheimer's, those sorts of things. And we've known this for a long time. They're just presenting it to you as like, just like it's brand new here on January 31st of 2023. So Linda Carroll writes, being overweight in midlife has been linked to greater risk of develop, developing Alzheimer's disease or dementia. And a new study shows that brain changes in obese people mirror some of those with Alzheimer's. Now, here's what I want to point out. And this is one of the reasons why I think that people like myself should have a little bit more conversation in what's going on because I point out a lot of stuff. Like I, I, this is what Crystal and I do for a living is deal with obese people. Like, I mean, this is what we do like day in, day out. I talk to all of you and I give dietary advice here and nutritional advice here and some like nutrition advice here and stuff. And I send our coaching and we have books written. I'm a best selling author, all this shit. I think that we should have a little bit more like to do with this stuff because we see the practical application of it. And I can tell you that it's not a surprise, you know, when you, when you understand inflammation, those sorts of things that 
being fat, which is a chronically inflammatory state, is negatively going to affect the cognitive abilities of somebody, especially over time, under a constant state of inflammation. It, this is just not in any way a fucking surprise to me at all, and nor was it when I read it the first time, like five fucking years ago. Um, them presenting it this way now is kind of crazy because the data that they're talking about was collected when like we were much less fat. Not only like here's what people need to grasp. Not only are we just fatter percentage wise as people since a lot of since from when a lot of this data was collected, but we are much fatter too. Like being overweight in midlife, overweight right now looks skinny. Like what they're talking about, the overweight in midlife, they're talking like if you've got like 20 extra fucking pounds on you. As a, you know, newsflash to everybody, the average American male has got about 30 extra pounds on them. The average American male is very overweight, if not obese. And by body measurements, including waist to height ratio, the average American male that's 199.8 pounds and five foot nine inches tall has a waist to height ratio of about 0.6. That is obese. And so being average in middle life now is being linked to having a greater risk of developing Alzheimer's and dementia than being than weighing less. That's what that should read. Like this is the thing that people aren't translating through. We keep talking about these same issues. We keep talking about how being obese affects your cognitive abilities, how it affects your self-control, your uh, perseverance, your task initiation ability. A lot of times cognitive, uh, you know, cognitive levels and behaviors, it, it negatively affects cognitive ability. It's been shown in multiple studies and it's, it's due to multiple different mechanisms. We've even shown there's, new, there's a lot of data out that shows that children who are obese develop less gray matter than children that aren't obese. Like they actually just develop less brain volume. Like these are very realistic, very serious things that we are just completely in our society painting over as no big deal so we can save some people's feelings. Like being fat is fucking bad for your brain, bitches. Like let's be real. Like it's bad for your fucking brain. Like at some point in time, People need to watch out for this shit because NBC News saying this, by the way, is a way for them to literally start over diagnosing Alzheimer's in people. We have the population of people that they're talking about is a highly medicated population of people, too. Most obese people are on multiple different medications, especially midlife obesity. If you're 40 years old and you're obese, like 250, 300 pounds and up, chances are you're on some sort of medication, unless you're some sort of very serious athlete at 250 pounds at 40 years old, nine times out of 10, you're on something, you know, like, I mean, like, and I mean, on something like blood pressure medication, something's going on. Like these medications, a lot of people don't like, they can cause brain fog, all sorts of shit. Like people are going to like, you need to look at whenever people that are paid for mostly by the pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare industry announce something they're telling you what they're about to announce. They're pretty much going to say, be able to say that the majority of the population is at risk of developing Alzheimer's early. They'll be able to like they like they form policy off possible things like this. This is very scary for people. People are the there's going to be, and I really believe this, a huge wave of people that actually develop issues with like cognitive issues, dementia, those sorts of things, it's going to massively increase due to how people have been treating their bodies. However, the diagnosing, I think, will even go past that. They'll be able to diagnose people with early onset Alzheimer's like it's going out of, like it's fucking crazy to get the money, to get the money. Science at McGill University in Montreal analyzed brain scans of more than 1,300 people. I'm going to say this. That's not that big of a, that's not that big of a study. This is one of the ones that's not that big of a study. But there are multiple others that have it where it's, you know, out of 60,000 people, obesity leads to cognitive decline, blah, 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 right? Okay. 1,300 people in the first research to directly compare the patterns of brain shrinkage in obese people and in Alzheimer's patients. So this is just them comparing brain shrinkage of obese people to brain shrinkage of Alzheimer's 
So it's a stated example that the uh, obese people already have some brain shrinkage. The scans revealed similar brain thinnings in regions involving the learning, memory, and judgment in both groups, according to a report published Tuesday in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. This should terrify the fuck out of everybody. This, I mean, this, this type of finding should absolutely horrify you. They're basically saying that if you stay fat, you're showing very similar progression of cognitive issues as that of a fucking Alzheimer's patient. This should, this should fucking terrify you. I mean, this, that could mean that being this fat in this state of inflammation for this long in our society while eating highly inflammatory foods such as ultra-processed carbohydrates and other ultra-processed foods, highly inflammatory items that you know, then inflame you even more to cause mental degradation and gray, and gray matter shrinkage, I mean, we should be doing something about this. My worry, again, is that the healthcare industry, that, that they're starting to talk about obesity, but yet they're not like, let, they're not in any way making it so it's on the person, right? They've literally just told you these people, the, the people that own this company in other ways, in other companies, and even on here have told you that being obese is not your choice. They're openly selling people on the idea that being obese is not a choice. It is genetics. They're openly pushing this bullshit that it is not the choices you make and your genetics. They're trying to just say it's your genetics. They're openly making this case. I could look up articles. I believe we even talked about NBC the other day in reference to them pushing uh, weight loss drugs. And now they're telling you that, oh, by the way, obesity causes this. Now, I'm saying that this has been true for a long time, but notice how they're telling you being obese is not your fault. These drugs can help you. If, you're ob if you stay obese, you're risking Alzheimer's. Like you get, you get how this is working. And don't get me wrong, if this will help people lose weight, fucking great. But I'm telling you, you got to watch this shit because this is the healthcare industry's way to start really even pushing these drugs more. But also like then diagnosing people early with Alzheimer's and then fucking getting more medication based off of that. It's, I mean, it's a huge racket. It just is. Obesity can cause changes in the body that are associated with ret with raising the risk of Alzheimer's, including damage to the brain's blood vessels and the accumulation of abnormal proteins. Earlier studies have found the new research takes it a step further. We show that there is a similarity between the brains of people who are obese and those with Alzheimer's, said the study's first author, uh, Philip Mayor, uh, Moores, a uh, postdoctoral neuroscience researcher at McGill University, and it boils down to the thickness of the, cort of the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex, which in humans is responsible for higher brain uh, function skills, such as speech, speech perception, long-term memory, and judgment, is the outer layer. So basically they're saying that the cere cerebral cortex thins the lining of the cerebral cortex thins, and that's what's responsible for higher brain functions, speech, perception, long-term memory, and judgment. And being fat negatively affects this. Thinning in that brain region might reflect a decrease in the number of brain cells. The McGill researchers suspected obese people and, po and possibly those who are overweight, BMI of 25 to 25.9. 20, uh, that's not right. It's 25. Uh, anyway. Uh, might be able to slow might be able to slow cognitive decline if they can get to a healthier weight. Notice, look at this. Look and look at the ads that they chose to put here. Weight loss drug ads. Very fucking nice. Why is obes obesity hazardous to the brain? The science isn't clear. Other conditions that are bad for the brain, including high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes, are also connected to obesity. Mary notes it's most people believe it's in the inflammation. Um, to take a closer look at the impact of obesity on the brain structure, Moores and his colleagues scrutinized brain scans for 341 Alzheimer's patients and 341 obese individuals with a BMI of 30 or more, along with scans from 682 healthy individuals. And again, here's the thing. The, their findings are not surprising. It's a small sample group, 1,300 people. They could have done more. Uh, they absolutely could have done more. But it sounds to me like they've gotten fairly, you know, definitive results that are to be expected and are massively supported by the other literature on the topic, like just massively supported. We have known for a long time. I've done video. I did videos years ago talking about 
brain inflammation and uh, and uh, neuro inflammation and cognitive issues and development and uh, hampering and de degradation. Like I, it's been years since I've been talking about this, which also makes it weirder that they're that NBC is also bringing it up while also saying that being fat is only is genetic. You can't you can't stop it. Apparently, all the you know it's it's crazy because there's going to be a massive influx of Alzheimer's patients here likely in another 15, 20 years, one from the more diagnosing, but two, it's just true. People like people that are obese and spend most of their life obese develop cognitive issues and dementia at a much quicker and much more, uh, ver, you know, ferocious rate pretty much like it's early, you know, and that it's going to be the norm. The wave of it's, it's coming is insane. It's just crazy. Same with type two diabetes. They're, they're linked together, you know, all the brain scans and the information came from two large health databases, UK Biobank and the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, a program that uh, recruits patients across North America and is funded in part by the National Institutes of Health. So this is an NIH funded thing, uh, basically the government. Uh, cognitive tests taken by, uh, taken by obese individuals in the study did not reveal obvious mental defects, which is good. But it's possible that the subtle changes in uh, cognition related to thinness uh, seen on the brain scans might not be picked up on tests, which I agree with. I think you see it behaviorally more than anything. Uh, the new research showed us something we didn't know before, such uh, said metabolism, met metabolism researcher Sabrina Di Diano, uh, director of the Institute of Human Nutrition and at, at uh, the Columbia Irving Medical Center. The study showed that obese individuals and those with Alzheimer's disease have common areas of brain that are smaller in size, possibly due to a neurodegenerative process, meaning the nerve cells in the region may experience damage that could be uh, damaged and could be dying. I mean, it's crazy. Could, could, lose, lose, could weight loss reverse the damage? The study opens the door to further exploration of whether weight loss might reserve some of the brain changes. Uh, said Dr. Joseph Malone, and as assistant, uh, an assistant professor of neurology in the Cognitive Disorders Division at the uh, University of Pittsburgh, Malone was not involved in the study. Uh, we do not know that obesity is associated with uh, with other brain with other diseases that can affect blood vessels in the brain, such as type two diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and inflammation, all of which could lead to the breakdown of blood vessels in the brain and thus contribute to brain cell death. This is stuff, we, like I said, we've talked about this before. I'm happy to see that they found somebody that's just saying we've always known this, which is very, very good. Uh, while the obese individuals in the study did not show memory declines, it's possible that what the researchers are seeing is an early stage in the development of Alzheimer's. Uh, one limitation in the research is that it direct, doesn't directly report on what people are eating, just that they're obese. Uh, and that is a big thing because if they're eating much more highly processed carbohydrates, uh, highly processed foods, that's been shown to actually have uh, a, del a deleterious effect on cognition also. So a very interesting article. I find it more interesting that it's on NBC just because I think that they're, I mean, everything is very much towards a specific thing. Uh, St uh, Stella, how are you? Cactus, uh, Cactus Patch, how are you? Little Monster, Sabrina, Slatsukin, Billy Beeson. What's up? How are you doing? Janet, how are you? Uh, can't stay because of work, but I wanted to share second day of NOMO and I didn't need any, didn't need my usual mid-morning snack and still feel satisfied for once. That is outstanding. Great to hear it. By the way, no morbidity right up here. You can get it $39.99 a month. We have people reporting back in weight losses of 15 to 20% in 46 months. Ozempic and Wegovy, or Wegovy then Ozempic, Claim 15 to 20 percent in 68 to 72 weeks, killing it. Plus, no side effects, killing it, killing it, absolutely killing it. Cookies, how are you? Annabelle, what's going on? Currently waiting for vegetable dumplings to be done. Oh, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Chatman, what's up? They played hedgehog. What's going on? This is, by the way, here's where we can get the 33% the, the off deal. Please do check it out. If you have had any trouble, if you've been yo-yo dieting, if you're having a hard time, if it's like it's an up and down thing, we can help you out. We, uh, we can absolutely help you out. You should check it out. Give me a second. Um, oops. There we go. 
bang. Okay, good, good, good. I lost four pounds in my first four days of off processed food. That is outstanding. Great job, Hannah. And again, I'm telling you, and I always try to go over this. I, it's weird because I keep getting people like, you know, I, I, I had somebody recently like, you think you're just a sellout? You're, you're selling a supplement? Like my supplement fucking helps thousands of people. You can fuck off. You're not going to shame me. It's four ingredients at clinically tested human doses. I've gone over every fucking ingredient on it. You're not going to shame me for helping thousands of people. I've got people that have told me that they're able to fucking, you know, finally, enjoy, they were able to finally enjoy the holidays for the first time in years with their hunger controlled, all sorts of shit. We have people saving hundreds of dollars on their food bill a month, hundreds of dollars on their food bill a month from taking this supplement. It is helping them build healthier habits. And that's what I always tell them too. Buy it. And then also let's try to get plenty of hydration. Let's try to keep your uh, processed foods down to next to nothing. Like I want it to help people. Like that's my thing. Let's help as many people as possible. We're not going to do this by lying to people about shit, but we do need to try to be as healthy as be as healthy as we can for each other. Like society is at that stage. Like people don't believe it, but there we're absolutely there. The pharmaceutical industries are taking over. Like, I mean, how can you people not see this? It is so crazy how much money has been generated and spent by these companies in the last couple of years. I mean, we spend trillions of dollars in America, four trillion dollars on healthcare and pharma a year. The biggest industry, bar none. Bar none, like I mean, like four trillion fucking dollars, people, is what we spend on healthcare in a year. That's entirely too much to spend on sickness when we are a sick population. It, it is not like we spend this per year. And everybody is healthy as fuck. It's not like we spend this per year and people don't like, and we have a uh, completely, you know, uh, you know, not pressured healthcare system. Should we have some sort of catastrophic, like natural disaster, our healthcare system wouldn't be stressed. Like we pay $4 trillion a year to be sick as fuck in America. That's failure in of itself. Like that and that alone should be the absolute reason that we completely rewrite the entire healthcare system. We pay $4 trillion a year plus more than $4 trillion a year is the shared healthcare burden for the United States taxpayer to be sick as fuck. It's, we, it, we need to change that. Like whatever we've done up until now has not worked. Scrap it all. Because we spend $4 trillion to be sick as fuck. $4 trillion to people be highly medicated, sick as fuck. Like literally like could die if they don't get medication for a week. Many people in America. We're so like, that's how sickly we are. We are so sickly that if the, like all of a sudden, if our medical technology was just blasted back, a hundred years ago, like fucking 50% of the population would fucking die. People are so dependent upon pharma and healthcare to live. It is insanity. Like we have allowed ourselves to be enslaved by these industries. Like it, $4 trillion a year to be sick as fuck. I mean, somebody tell me why that could possibly be. Why it is the largest industry bar none. Bar none. It's, I mean, it's just a crazy amount. Uh, how is everybody doing? I saw these people here. Amelia, Jad, Captain, Alanya, Chris, Claire, in memory of Jordan uh, Mordaunt. Help us, Hawk. Lindsay, how the fuck you doing? Savar, how are you? Jessica, what's going on? Eric, what's going on? Uh haven't, uh, haven't they been saying obesity is Alzheimer's risk since 1970s? Yes, they have. That's what I'm saying. Like another new study to tell us everything we already knew. It's because they're make, it's because the pharmaceutical industry is pushing. The reason why it's now all of a sudden on NBC is because they're pushing. Notice how they're also saying like, you know, it's white supremacist to work out. Like it's just so fucked up, you know? No notifications for the live day, uh, live days, but I get notifications for Alan's uploads for uh, new videos. What gives? Uh, uh, 
Give me a second. Okay, I just want to make sure, like, there are videos from yesterday and the day before. So, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, yes, she, uh, yes, it was. No, no. It, wow, I'm, I'm backed up on comments. So, that was a while ago. All right, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. When I was in the hospital five years ago, at the same time of the year, the one nurse told me how dementia is on the high rise these days. And they don't know why, but we do. Oh, we do. It's it's absolutely the junk food and the fatness level. Like, you can't. You're. you're it's. It, we're we're physically sick. We're physically ill. Like we live in a state of managed illness. We don't live in a state of health. There's not actually. There's not population health. It is the level of population illness that is managed. The managed level of population illness is what we have. We don't have population health. Like this could all change in very relatively very fucking quickly. Like we could right the ship here in like five, 10 fucking years. Like we could go from what we are now, fat as fuck, completely ridiculous, complete in complete denial of that being fucking fat as fuck is in fact bad for everything. Like society is in, society is so addicted to the shit food that they are gluttoning themselves on that they are openly lying about the impact that that type of behavior and those products have on the entirety of the fucking world, the entirety of our existence. Like to consume that much calories, that, that much processed food, the, as many calories as it would be for all of us to be as fat as a fuck of a country as we are. Like imagine the extra calories consumed, the extra production that means when we have a majority obese country, imagine how much over consumption that is on a daily basis, how much extra waste that is on a daily basis, how much extra transportation of these goods is on a daily basis. It puts more waste, more carbon, more all like uses more resources, more fuel. Just the act alone of gluttony to the point where we're morbidly obese is in fact bad for our environment, for our economy, so many things. Because as we can see, people cannot develop wealth when they're morbidly obese most of the time. And this is just fucking reality. A lot of times people, because they get too fucking ill, like they have a hard time accumulating wealth because they get, they're sick all the fucking time. That's a new thing, but it's fucking happening. We, I mean, it is, we are enslaved. We are $4.1 trillion a year in expenditure and burden to be sick as fuck. It's not working. People would need to accept the fact that we are in fact sick as fuck. People would have to be looking towards how can I be as healthy as I can, so I don't have to be on any medications. That should be precedent. People should be encouraged to do that. <laughs> Instead, nope. I managed to stay off meds when I was uh, 323 pounds at 40. Now I'm 42 and I'm on 206. Hopefully, uh, hoping to stay that way. That's fucking awesome. Great goddamn job too. That's a fucking great job. I mean, it, it, why do you start using that? Being about as bad for your brain, bitches. It is. It's bad for your brain. It's, it is. It's bad for your brain. My father has late stage dementia. My deepest condolences. That's horrible. Uh, eating sugar affects him exactly like alcohol now. It's, it doesn't surprise me at all. Thank you for the information. Thanks to you. I realized my issue with dairy. Oh, good, good, good. Not only a massive influx, but a massive influx of younger, younger patients. Yep. Lots and lots and lots of younger younger dementia patients. Lots. Um, let's see here. My mom was diagnosed with dementia when she was 63. She wasn't obese, but she never cared for herself. She refused to exercise, just watched hockey, and barely ate. Ugh. Sorry to hear that. I'm very sorry to hear that. Processed carbs and high carb in general, along with the jabs, are adding to dementia. We've seen little kids being diagnosed here in Europe. Little kids with dementia, dementia if little kids start developing dementia... Like what what that means like that means what was done to the population of the world is like how are we not how are how are people not like facing like charges about crimes against humanity for this shit? That's that's fucking crazy. Oh my god. New blood clot test uh, ads for dementia and Alzheimer's testing are becoming very prevalent in the South. I fucking 
I'm telling you. I lost four pounds this week. Super increased my, in my energy. Lots of water, meat, and salt. Boom. Good fucking job. Keep up with the hydration. An ounce of fluid per pound of body mass a day. Try to get 75% of it before midday. I'm telling you. Great. I was just looking for something to listen to while training. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Alan, I wanted to say thank you for yesterday's news vid, uh, Newsweek vid. Made me tear up a little. Uh, never stop. Well, I... You know, my thing about it, about it is, is this, like they were wrong. Like it's the same thing. Like the public health officials that were wrong about like, for, for, like for, that were wrong for the last three years, we should realize that it shouldn't be a surprise. We spend $4.1 trillion a year as Americans to be sick as fuck. That's a problem. Like we should completely as people evaluate why that is that is a humongous societal burden like if we as people were to sit down and look at our budget we would be like why the fuck are we spending 4.1 trillion dollars for health care when we're sick as fuck we are sick as fuck we spend 4.1 million 4.1 trillion dollars a year on health care and we had to close the nation down because we were worried about a cold there's a problem with this a humongous problem and the healthcare industry the the hospital uh hospital uh industry and circuit has only gotten weaker. They've only gotten weaker as they have attritioned out people who refuse to take uh, the Jimmy jab. The, the, the hospital care, the care system is never been weaker in the last couple of decades. We have less qualified people. We have uh, a lot more sickly people actually working, which is fucking crazy, way understaffed bed counts are way down. It's not because they don't have the beds. People have seen a misunderstanding. It's not because they don't have the beds. They don't have the staff for the beds. That's why bed count is down. That's why it looks like it, it, like this is an art we've had for the last year and a half, an artificial inflation in what it looked like our ICU uh, numbers were. Like people are reporting back in, oh my God, they're at 100% occupancy. No, they're at 100% occupancy for the staffing that they fucking have. They had fired dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of staff members and nurses and CNAs for not wanting to fucking take something that didn't fucking matter. It was a artificially and purposefully, in my opinion, made shortage of hospital beds so they can look like they're fuller so they can continue with the panic when, in fact, they weren't nearly as full if they would have been at uh, capacity, fully staffed capacity from 2020, hospitals would have been relatively empty. Like there, there would have been phone calls going out to from executives in the healthcare industry to their administrators like, why the fuck are you under census projections? But they fired a bunch of people. So therefore, the number of available beds that they can staff goes down. Therefore, if you like, you can literally not admit one patient. Say you have 100 patients and you're uh, you're at 133 beds. So you are what would we consider what you're fucking 75 percent full. Right. Uh, so because you now have 100 patients and 133 beds, all of a sudden. You lose the staffing for 33 of those beds. Like you don't have the nurses to be able to staff those beds and you go down a hundred beds. Now you're at a hundred percent capacity and you haven't even had one fucking admission. And it happens all the goddamn time. It happens all the fucking time. Study of the 30th wealthiest countries showed USA spends the most of all countries in healthcare for the worst outcomes overall. Alan should do a video about that. I likely will. I likely will. That's why I'll be happy as fuck when, when the day comes where I don't need any of my pills anymore. Good for you. Keep working at it. No shit. Nobody definitely helped me take control of my eating habits. I lost the 15 pounds I needed to lose and lost another two pounds just by uh, sticking to my new habits. Can't uh, wait for product two. That's fucking great. Nina, thank you very much. I'm glad it worked for you. Get your no morbidity at uh, AmbrosiaCollective.com, TigerFitness.com. You can get it in the links in the description box below. Those sorts of things. Thank you. What is considered an unprocessed food? Like minimally processed would be actual beef because the processing is you cutting it off the fucking animal. I'd say like one-step processing. So unprocessed food is vegetables, fruits, meats, fish, those sorts of things. Michelle, how you doing? Thank you very much. Set out raw, uh, raw and some as raw and same as sources uh, is unprocessed food. Yeah, 
Unprocessed food would be one ingredient food. Yep, I agree with that. I agree with those. What else we got? Anybody got any questions? I went down from 196 to 164 with no morbidity in Ember. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Boom. Hell fucking yeah. Hell yeah. Tell all your friends. Tell all your friends. That's outstanding. Most media articles are insulting. They really are. It's the, I mean, it's it's this is stupidity. I love sitting here reading the chat and seeing all of our stories success. Keep going. That's what people say that I'm so fucking mean. My chat, like most of the chat is people talking about like their wins, encouraging each other, like fucking going, like really fucking being realistic. I fucking love the daily chats. You know, I mean, I really do. Took your advice for eating my carbs, fruit, honey, real food at night to help with the day, all day cravings. It helps so much. Great. Maddie, I'm so happy that worked for you. Thank you very much. And if anybody's wondering what I'm saying, I normally tell people if you're going to even taste the flavor of sweet to have it later on in the evening. That way, if it does cause you to have some sort of uh, glycemic response, like even just like you, you, know, you spike insulin or something like that, you just get hungrier because you tasted something sweet. You only have a few hours in the evening before you go to sleep. So it won't be like you're just hungry all day long. So, uh, And thank you again, Maddie. Christina lost seven pounds first month on no morbidity. Boom. Yes. I'm telling it's it is like I <laughs> it is all natural, safe, $39.99 a month or harsh pharmaceutical with risk of thyroid tumors for $1,300 a month. This produces serious results. I'm not going to say better because I'm not going to get myself sued, but this produces 15 to 20% of their body mass results in like four to six, sometimes eight months. It produces results. Drink an ounce of fluid per pound of body mass. Take no morbidity. You will not be hungry. You will feel much, much, much better. It helps with stress also. You can make, you'll just try to stick to as little uh, of processed food as possible. Try to stay unprocessed as much as possible. Make ultra processed foods five or you know, around 5% of your nutritional intake, if any, and just live your fucking life. Come here for more advice. Hey, on, I read an article about a man uh, about man-made vegetables and it included almost every vegetable we normally eat. I had no idea broccoli had 67 gr grams of sugar. Is sugar in vegetables the same as uh, regular sugar? Broccoli has 67 grams of sugar in it. You would have to eat a massive, unfucking precedented amount of that. Like, I mean, I mean, broccoli sugar content. So let's take a look. One cup is 1.5 grams of sugar. One cup of broccoli. Uh, I mean, to get to the, where you're at, you would need a humongous amount. Just a humongous amount of that. You would need 60 cups. I don't think people are, I don't, I don't think people are pulling that in. Uh, I asked you about sweet cravings before you suggested saving it to later in the evening. Uh, I made a big difference. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy. I'm happy. It's working for you. I'm telling all my friends about it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that too. Your community encourages people to stay healthy and to believe in themselves. The ones who hate you are part of a community that, uh, wants others to give up and remain miserable. I'll take it. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Hey, Alan, I asked yesterday, but not sure if you answered. Do you have an age limit to your coaching? Asking for my mom, who's 70. No, we, uh, 18, 18 and up, uh, Anna. Uh, and we've had clients as old as 80. So we have an 18 and up, you know? You got to consider calorie density of the food you're eating. Not really. Like, yeah, you do. But, I mean, if you eat a smaller portion of, the cal uh, of a calorically dense food, I mean, I get what you're saying, like size wise, like portion size wise, it makes a difference from food to food. But most of the time, calorically dense foods do pro offer more satiation unless they're ultra processed. If they're a non-processed food that has a high, a high amount of calories in it, like a calorically dense one, it's normally a protein, a meat, something like that, or protein with fats. But if it's like a matter of ultra processed food, like cake and stuff like that, that's a whole different story. Da, 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 da. 
Morgan, I've started eating healthier and the difference with cravings is insane. It really is. It really is. Uh, let's see here. 40 minutes. What other questions we got? I was shocked to see carrots, apples, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, and similar vegetables and fruit were bred with mustard plants. Oh. I don't know. This is a keep it 100 zone. That's the thing. I, I mean, I wish we could just like start talking about shit. Like, does not, doesn't anybody fucking understand? Like, we need to talk about this shit. Like, I, you know, people, people wanting to like not listen to each other and talk and not talk shit through. It's so fucking, it's going to get us no place. At the very least, we can come together and agree to disagree. And if we can't stay like living in the same country, we can't like at some point in time, we got to talk about shit. We've reached an unsustainable level. Of, like we're all enslaved right now. All of us. $4.1 trillion in healthcare burden spread amongst all the fucking people of the United States a year to be sick as fuck. If we're going to pay that amount of money, we should all be healthy as fuck. Like we should all be just super fucking healthy. Like it shouldn't like we shouldn't be like have people dying of fucking lifestyle driven illnesses. We shouldn't be have a fucking I got a fucking cat here all over me. We shouldn't have uh we don't ha we don't have anything, you know, we don't have any other illnesses. Uh and you don't judge our questions. I I sometimes do. I don't give a fuck if you don't like it or not. I judge I mean, if it's a stupid question, it's a stupid question. Um when will they do a study on the increased modern day crime uh, crime to diet? My bet is there's a huge link. I would imagine. I think so. I think that they would find uh, like the more studies that they do, they're going to find way more correlation between mental illness and obesity also too. Like that's that's really the fucking thing. You know, I found that if I eat something like rolled oats in the morning, no sugar, just uh, blueberries added, I don't crave sugar as much. That's awesome too. Very fucking good. Way to fucking work it through. Fiber and water also help with satiety. I used to eat a lot of uh, dried fruit. Now I just eat the whole fruit. Good for you. Good for you. Uh -uh. People need to stop being offended. Here's my thing. If you're offended, understand that the truth is what's offensive then. Like, that's what I find amazing. You know, like... Okay, if if it if you find it offensive, why do you find it offensive? Okay, because here's the thing: if like like I personally find it offensive when people make jokes about little kids. Like, I mean, I I find that shit fucked up. I, I'm I'm super offended by it. I'm offended because I believe that in our society, we literally have like this top tier of society that has you know done some fuck shit in their lives. And we don't want to talk about it. And I literally fucking like, it, to me, society is way too easy with talking about like non-children shit with children, right? I'm offended by it. That's, that's what I find offensive. What I will do about it is say, I don't fucking, uh, you know, I don't fucking approve. And I, you know, you do you, but I'm going to say that that I find it offensive. If people find that I find, find it offensive that I find it offensive, they can feel free to be offended too. But at some point in time, where does that fucking lead us? Like, who gives a fuck if you're offended? Especially if it's by the truth. If you're offended by the truth, you should figure out why the truth is fucking offending you so much. Not necessarily, the, you know, oftentimes people get, and I can speak from very serious fucking re reference here, that oftentimes people just get pissed off at the person that says the truth. But it's still the fucking truth. The truth can be said by a six-year-old standing there, you know, with a lollipop in their hand, and it's still fucking true. Like, somebody can say, you know, a doctor, PhD, you know, actually on the USDA Nutritional Guidelines, you know, committee, can say that obesity is more genetic than lifestyle choice. And a six-year-old can say that any human being can lose weight. Like, when the... PhD doctor, whatever on the nutrition thing says that like, you know, some people, no matter how much, how optimal their diet, how optimal their nutrition, how optimal their exercise, all that bullshit is, some people can't lose weight. That is untrue. No matter what her fucking pedigree is, her title is, it's still untrue. And a six-year-old with a lollipop can say that losing weight is a matter of burning more calories than you take in and they'll be correct. 
the truth does not need presentation. It's still fucking true. The truth does not need background lighting, mood music. It does not need some fucking special person to say it. The truth is going to be the fucking truth. Period. The truth is being fat is bad for you. It does not matter what anybody says beyond that. It is just fucking true. You cannot accept it. That's your choice. It's not going to make it untrue. You know, my opinion is if it didn't affect other people, you do you, boo. I'm still going to try to encourage people to lose weight because I don't want people to die young. You see, people say that all the time, like to me all the time, like, you know, why do you do, like people ask why I do this? One, it's my job. Two, this is what I do for a fucking living. But two, like, I don't want to see people die. Like, I don't want to see people like I have seen plenty of people like have the very negative effects from obesity. I don't want to see other people do it. I want to help people. And I have a knowledge and, uh, and know how to do so. It's very strange that people get, get on the fucking thing like, oh, you just want to be mean to people. If I wanted to be mean to people, I'd tell you to keep fucking eating. If I wanted to be mean to Tess Holiday, I would send her a fucking dozen donuts. If I wanted to be mean to Lizzo, I would fucking send her a fucking huge box of fucking Oreos. If I wanted to be mean to these people, I would tell them to continue what they're fucking doing. Because that is, in fact, bad for them. I, if, I would, if, I would, if I did not like these people, if I hated fat people, I would be encouraging fat people to keep eating all the fucking foods. I would be encouraging them to not get exercise. I would be encouraging them to eat as much processed food as possible. I would encourage them to only drink soda instead of drinking water. And I'm not talking about that diet bullshit. I'm talking about let's drink the fully leaded fucking jolt ass fucking soda that has the extra sugar and the extra fucking caffeine in it. Let's go full bore. If I really did not like fat people, I would absolutely tell them that no matter what, they can just keep eating. It doesn't matter. Just if you want to eat it, you fucking eat it. It doesn't matter that you, you're starting your day off with fucking cake. If you want to start your day off with cake, start your day off with cake. If I didn't you know, care for people, if I didn't have fucking empathy, I'd be telling fat people to eat ice cream for lunch every fucking day. If I didn't have empathy for people, I would be telling everybody to leave fat people alone, let them do exactly what they want to do. It is not your business, even though we have shared health care expenditure. If I didn't like fat people, that's what I would do. My eyes are often offended every time I go to Walmart. Mine also, buddy. Uh, mine also. Just be mean and send Tess and Lizzo some no morbidity. If they, if I thought that they would use it, I would send it to them. No shit. I, I, re I mean it. You know. A fair many videos have popped up now about healthy gyms being discriminatory because the machines in the gyms are likely only rated to 300 pounds. The fucked up thing, I saw this, I was going to make a video on it. I still might. I still might make a shorter video on it. But I'm seeing that a lot. Like, you know, my gym didn't even have equipment for me uh, uh, over 300 pounds. It's because you're 300 fucking pounds. Like 300 pounds. And this is, if you're a 300 pound person, I hope you spoke to your doctor and possibly a physical therapist before you started working out. And I'm not joking. If you're an average height 300 pound person, especially, I absolutely suggest you talk to your doctor about getting physical therapy. A 300 pound woman, a 300 pound average height woman does not walk like their gait is obstructed. Like don't, they don't walk in a healthy way. They don't even walk in a healthy way because their legs have so much girth to them that they waddle. That's very bad for you. That's bad for your back, bad for your hips, bad for your knees, bad for your ankles, especially because women have a larger uh, Q angle than men. So like the Q angle is, say this is the hip, right? This is the outside outside of the hip. This is the femur and this is the uh, ball of the ball of the femur, you know, the hip socket. It goes in, the angle right here is different for men and women. So women have uh, a little wider of an angle for childbirth, but it also causes the knees to valgus. So ACLs are, are a problem. It's also why a lot of fat women blow their knees out because the way they stand with their legs out, there's already valgus with uh, pressure going in on the knees for the ACL, and they're just fat as fuck. I mean, if you're a 300-pound person, you're, you're upset that the gym doesn't have a treadmill for you, you should be walking anyway. You shouldn't be jogging anyway. Walk around the fucking gym. Walk around the fucking track. If it's not, I mean, 
and I mean this, like, and I do think that a 300 pound person should be getting walks in. That's for sure. But you should be talking to your fucking medical provider. And I'm not big on, 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 you know, and I, the thing is, I have to say that to not get in trouble, even though I do openly say that the healthcare industry is full of fucking shit because again, $4.1 trillion to be sick as fuck. It, it makes no sense, but you should absolutely be very careful and maybe talk, and I do believe in physical therapy, but maybe maybe talk to a good physical therapist because you're 300 fucking pounds. Like 300 fucking pound people. The problem is like society's got it twisted to think that that's not an enormous fucking human being. An enormous human fucking being. Way too fucking big. If you're 100, like the average male should probably not weigh no more than 170 pounds. Like no more than 170 pounds. They weigh, the average male weighs 199.8 pounds, but they shouldn't weigh probably anything more than 170 pounds. So if you're a 300 pound male at average height, you're 100 fucking 30 pounds overweight. Not 130 pounds, like that's just 130 pounds of extra fucking weight. That would still leave you at a healthy body fat range. You're 130 pounds over fucking weight. You are a fat fuck. You should fix that shit. Absolutely. You should accept the fact that you glutton yourself to 300 fucking pounds. And do something about that shit. You should also be super fucking careful to make sure you don't get any fucking injuries. Because an injury for a 300 pound dude that's average height is in fact very fucking. If you get a knee injury at that fucking weight, it could fucking kill you. It could cause a death spiral. Because you move even less than you're already moving your fat ass. You are eating more food out of depression and boredom because you are laid up because you have a knee injury or ankle injury. Like to get an ambulatory injury as a morbidly obese person, a 300 pound person could kill you because it could start a spiral of you gaining even more weight, which makes the knee recover or the ambulatory injury recover even slower. You're going to you're going to heal slower anyway, because you're in a state of constant inflammation because you are indeed a fat fuck and you're 300 pounds. So then you're going to end up dead. <laughs> like if you are a fucking if you're a 300 pound woman and you're average height, you're more than twice what you fucking should weigh. But you, it, you should take it real serious. Like this complaint that gyms don't have equipment that go above 300, you know, above a 300 pound person. It's an insane argument to get to begin with. You're twice what you should fucking weigh. Like, let's get reality. Like, let's not worry about the oppression of a gym trying to make sure they have equipment safe for everybody, you know, that they can afford. The gym is, is not the person that got you to 300 pounds. You are. And you should not be worried about too much serious physical activity until you get your weight down a little bit. Like go walking, go swimming. I would much prefer that. There is no weight limit on swimming. There's no weight limit on swimming. None. No, there's no weight limit on swimming. You should go swimming as much as fucking possible. And watch what you fucking eat and try to drink 300 ounces of fluid in a day. And don't eat processed food. You've had enough. You've had enough processed food for a long time. Until the first 50 pounds, you should probably not even think about having even a meal just for pleasure. Eat vegetables, fruit in the evening, and protein. If you're 300 pounds, you need to take it very fucking seriously and not complain about gym equipment. It sounds ridiculous. You, three, a 300 pound person is enormous, right? Like people have it so skewed in their head, they don't see it anymore. But that is a fucking humongous human being. The Undertaker was labeled at 300 pounds 20 fucking years ago, and everybody acted like he was a goddamn giant. He was seven feet fucking tall, labeled at 300 pounds. Now, that's Bob that does that bags your fucking groceries. Bob is 300 pounds. The Undertaker 20 fucking years ago, 30 fucking years ago. The Undertaker, right? Professional sports entertainer, athlete, had once fucking played semi-pro basketball. 6'11", big fucking thick-ass fucking farm boy, labeled at 300 pounds. And they lied about his weight a little bit to get it to 300. He weighed like 280. Lifts weights, everything like that. Undertaker. Bob, who fucking, uh, who bagged your groceries yesterday that weighs 300 pounds at average height. He looks like a fucking ball. Bob? Bob should be trying to get into the fucking pool and swim. Bob should be just trying to eat 2,000 calories a day, mostly protein, healthy fats, and non, uh, non-sweet non fucking vegetables. Like, Bob is in serious fucking jeopardy 
of having very serious issues. You are 300 fucking pounds. Us pretending that's not a very serious fucking state of illness is the problem. Not the fact that gyms don't have, some fucking gyms don't have equipment for people that weigh over 300 pounds to do their cardio and shit on because that shit needs to be fucking super reinforced and shit. Reality exists. If you're a 300 pound person, swim, walk, be very, very, very careful to not get injured. Be extremely careful. Push yourself at a very consistent pace that you can repeat day after day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Because if you are a 300 pound person, this journey is just starting and it's going to need to last the rest of your life. If you are a 300 pound person now and you still do get it down to like 170 pounds as, a, as an adult male, and you are 300 pounds now, the chances that you could gain that weight back are very fucking high. This is a lifelong thing you need to change for good. So you need to find repeatable activity that you like to do that you're going to do day after day after day after day. Worrying about the treadmill at the gym not being rated for a 300 pound person is a fucking excuse. Go for a fucking walk. Get in a fucking pool. Do activity. Shut the fuck up. And move. It's fucking crazy. But yes, I have seen it. And I will likely do a video about it. I'm not near 300 pounds, and I don't and I don't use most of the equipment at my gym. Most of it is with kettlebells, dumbbells, TRX. That's I mean, again, there's no weight limit on swimming. There, there's no weight limit on swimming at all. What are our joints uh, rated for natural pound wise? My guess is it is in 300 pounds. It's not even the joints, although the joints do have, you know, the development of osteo osteoarthritis and stuff like that from the constant pounding. It's that it wears out the connective tissue at a much higher rate too. And that doesn't get helped by like your cartilage gets fucked up, but most people that are morbidly obese are pretty fucking sedentary too. So they don't actually bend their joints as much as other people that are active. And the bending of your joints is what actually causes circulation to the cartilage. It actually what helps cartilage to heal and stuff like that. So being sedentary is even bad for you that way too. It's fucking crazy. My heaviest was 204 pounds as a 5'1 woman, and I already noticed my body deteriorating, especially with the joint pain. I cannot imagine what 300 pounds is like for the average height woman. I mean, the average height woman's five, three and a half inches tall, and the average woman weighs about 170 pounds. But there are tons of, th I mean, like, fuck, Tessa's like 5'2". She's like 400 some, some fucking pounds. Uh, I'm like 15 minutes from Hollywood Universal. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. People forget that there's so much you can do uh, with just your body at home. You don't need a gym. Exactly. So listen, guys, I've been on here about an hour. I hope everybody has a great goddamn day. Again, one more time, here's where you can get... Uh, uh, consultation or get our coaching. We really appreciate you guys. If you just want to join the app so you can see what's going on with that, here is the link to it. Give me one second. I'll put that here also. Right there. And I'm going to do what? I'll, I'll grab this one question. What can I do when my mom is judging and being rude about my weight loss and fitness journey? If it was any other person, I would cut them out. Ignore. Her. I mean, the fuck it's your mom. You know, like hopefully she hopefully it comes from a place of love. But just ignore it. You know, say I'm good. You know? Like I'm not gonna tell you to tell off your mom. You know, that's I mean, you're good. If she's getting judgy, just assure her that you're doing what you like to do and you feel good and you feel healthy and stuff like that. You know, that's what, I mean, that's normally what moms are worried about. So, all right, guys, I am off. I hope everybody has a great day.